All right, quick update. Uh, we're still working on vertical stabilizer. Um, the section that I'm working on now in this video here is going to be this, uh, uh, the vertical part of the vertical stabilizer. No, so this uh, section here with the doubler. Um, and then hopefully we'll then also get to assembling uh, this internal skeleton here. But yeah, we'll get to this part here and we'll get moving. How's it going? So it has been way too long since our last, uh, our last build video. Um, not too much has happened since then. Uh, I did get some parts in uh, for the back spar for the vertical stabilizer. Um, so that was exciting. Um, you'll see a couple of hinge points there. I'm waiting on installing this bottom portion here. Um, there was another issue that I had with the countersinking bit where the, the actual bit was mislabeled, uh, which was super interesting, but Cleveland Tools was able to, to sort it out. They're sending another one over to me. Um, but yeah, it was driving me insane. I had a countersink bit for a number eight bolt screw, whatever, a number eight, and the pilot head was the size of a number 10. And so I went through and literally measured every single one that I had and it was driving me insane. Sent them a picture of it and they said, oh yep, it's mislabeled. So just send that on over. I jumped a little bit ahead in the, uh, let's put this somewhere where it won't break. Um, yeah, so I jumped a little bit ahead in the steps. We're getting over to dimpling right now, uh, which will be super fun. So part of the steps was to, or before dimpling, uh, you'll see, eh, Part of the steps was to go through and mark off certain ones that you're not supposed to dimple uh, that are going to actually have screws later on down the road. So I went through, put masking tape on the ones, and double check, double check, triple check, quadruple checked. Those are the ones that do not get dimpled. So there's uh, some along this line here, and then also that top portion there. Also transferred on, on over to the skeleton, so that'll be ready to go. I've already dimpled one side of it so far over here, so we'll get to doing the other side. You'll see there's a couple of scratches on it from when I was, uh, you'll see when I'm dragging it along the bottom portion, it actually is scratching it quite a bit. I'm not too worried about it just because of the outside of the plane, I've seen the way people treat them when they go to paint them, and basically they beat the heck out of it with scotch Bright abrasive pads and whatnot, so I'm not too worried about the scratches on the outside. On the inside I would worry, and if I did scratch them I'd probably primer it. Um, but yeah. Let's get to it. So let's see, this thing is pretty awkward to, uh, awkward to handle and awkward to record. But I wanna get you a cool shot here so you can actually see what's going on. You will also see that over off the left side of the frame there, um, I covered the, uh, the grinding wheel with a little bit of carpet just to be safe. Ah, if I can match it up. Just so you can see what's going on before we put you on time lapse. Ah. Yeah, this is where it almost may be more convenient here. Um, to use the pneumatic squeezer. I mean, it's nice and quiet being able to do this, but um, I can see we're using the pneumatic squeezer here. That would probably help out quite a bit. Um, there are going to be a couple towards the very center that I'm not going to be able to get on this, just due to the angle of the sheet metal uh, with the curve. So what we'll do there is I went and picked up a, uh, a manual rivet squeezer from Harbor Freight and I have an attachment there that should work to, uh, to get those done. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cut ahead. This is probably super boring to watch. So I'm going to put you to the side. We'll do a quick time lapse here and then we'll come back and uh, hopefully by then we're at the river portion. So here's a point here where uh, if I could redo the platform, I totally would. The original plans called for the table to be shorter than the actual working head here um, on the, uh, the, the dimpler. And I figured that I wanted the material to be super level with it and prevent any kind of kicking in the material or anything like that. Don't do that. Make it the way they do it where the working piece is sitting proud of the actual table itself. Reason being, when you come in um, 
into the middle of the sheet here, you'll see I'm really, really working to keep the bit centered there. Um, so with the male portion coming out there, um, the idea is you can kind of lock it into place and um, really secure the material before you go ahead and, uh, and dimple. But as you get more towards the middle, um, it becomes a, a little bit of a, of a guessing game almost of where, where the actual um, head is located. So you'll see you have to get it kind of near it. And then I have a little bit of a, a bounce back with the material where I have to be super, super careful to make sure I'm not um, missing it. Because if you do miss it, then you can end up with a, uh, a, uh, a bulge in a place where you don't want it. So like in, in this instance here, like I think I'm centered there. And sure enough, I am. But I mean, you can probably tell that if, um, if it was in the wrong location, you'll end up with a, uh, with a little bit of a nipple in the wrong spot. No one likes a nipple in the wrong location. Um, so yeah, summed up, I would uh, do it to their plans. So I ended up making a little bit of an oopsie. Um, it was in that section where, uh, where I was having to push against the actual sheet metal corner or the bend in the sheet metal. Um, so right here you'll see um, it came in a little bit, it's probably hard to see it with the camera focusing, but it came in a little bit at, a, uh, at an angle. Um, so the dimple actually did end up getting angled. It's pretty jagged on the end. I don't think it's actually cracked. It looks like it just actually stuck to the uh, to the dimpler, I am still gonna go ahead and drill it out to one size larger, because um, I did actually buy a kit um, from Aircraft Spruce, I believe. I think it's Aircraft Spruce. Anyways, an oops rivet kit. Um, so it'll allow me to go up one size, get rid of all the nasty metal there. It'll have the same size, um, the same size head, just a bigger hole. Um, so that'll be fine there, at least to clean up that hole, just to prevent anything from happening in the future. I went ahead and already marked it just so it doesn't freak me out when I go to rivet this together either today or some other time. Um, so labeled it as an oops that way I can go ahead and uh, know what I'm doing when I go to rivet it together. All right, so we're at the point in the bend here where this no longer fits in the frame. So like I mentioned earlier, I have a uh, close quarters dimpling set uh, from Cleveland Tools. Um, so the way it works is it comes with um, these little, basically you build a rivet, so um, the back portion here, actually let me make sure I get this right so I don't do it wrong, um, let's see here, so the back portion will have the female side, um, so this will end up coming behind the material, I'll get it closer so you can actually see what's going on, um, but this back portion you'll see has the female side, so I'll put that through that little hole there and then on top will go the male portion. Uh, so this will sandwich that sheet metal and the way this works is as the handheld rivet dealio thingy uh, pulls this it'll basically pull it tight and the idea is that as it sandwiches together it's pulling that material uh, or pushing the material um, into the die so let's get to it um, i've already done the two on the back side have this one to do here um, it does say in the instructions something about not going too hardcore on it or basically you're supposed to squeeze it until you feel resistance then stop. Um, I didn't do that. I already broke off one of these so luckily the kit came with I think it's like six or so of these, uh, of these little doodads. So I plan on probably breaking a few in the process. Um, so anyways we'll get to it. And then just for fun, um, just because I figure I may end up breaking a couple of these in the process. I actually already tested this with a standard uh, standard aluminum rivet, and it actually worked. I took a regular um, a regular aluminum a, livet, a regular aluminum rivet and uh, pulled the uh, the outer piece off of it, or hit it off with a hammer, and used just the regular aluminum rivet inside of this rivet kit here, and it actually did the same thing. Um, so it's just good to know that worst case, if you do end up shooting through all these, uh, you'll still have an uh, ability to um, to use the whole kit if you have any aluminum rivets um, standing by. Yes, on the back side, I'm just holding it flush. And we'll see how this works. Yeah, I'm 
just still not as happy with the uh, with the quality of that. I'll try going up to the steel one. I did feel the resistance. Um, it definitely dug into dug into it here. I'm gonna jump up to the steel one again and see if I can pull that any tighter. I also broke one steel one, so I'm down to just one. Um, but it made a really good looking dimple. Uh, so let's change this back on over, uh, go up a size and try that steel one out. If I do break them, it's not the, the end of the world. Um, like I said, I found those aluminum ones to work. And the reason why I'm getting such a high up purchase on this and not going all the way down to the rubber handles is I have a feeling if you're all the way back here, that's too much leverage on it. I'm using the whole grip itself. So I'm really trying to prevent these from snapping. And I could be wrong there. That felt good. Yeah, that looks good. That's awesome. And I didn't break it, which is even better. Uh, but it definitely has a death grip on it. But here, I'll uh, take you off your stand and give you a look. So it looks pretty good. Definitely got scratched a little bit. I don't know if that was... Uh, during the process there, but I'm really not worried about scratching the, the outside here. Uh, Cause like I said earlier, this whole thing will be scuffed down, sanded down, primed and painted in the long run. Um, but that looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. Alrighty, so one little thing that I just discovered just now when it comes to doing the, uh, uh, the dimpling on the ribs is there's a couple of these holes um, where they're pretty close to this, um, I think that's called a lightning hole, I think. Anyways, pretty close to here to where it, it comes off as a, uh, or it seems like it's going to interfere um, with the actual dimpler. Uh, the thing I just discovered though, just take it in very, uh, just take that very slowly. Um, and as it goes closer, let me see if I can get this a closer shot. As it gets closer, it'll kind of walk itself walk itself in and around, and as you can probably see with that angle, uh, it kind of straightens itself out. So you don't have to worry too much. Just make sure that you're going slow there that we don't end up with a, uh, a crooked dimple. Um, but there's another one. Let me get through these real quick. And I'll show you the other one. I don't think this rib is the most severe with it. Um, there's a couple of others where it gets very, very close. But here's another one, just for example. You can see there the angle is significantly off of uh, 90 degrees. But as that gets closer, it kind of walks itself into the correct location underneath that uh, that lip. And the other thing that you'll notice with these is there's a whole lot of tape. I think I went in the video earlier um, and kind of explained that these are where there's actually going to be screws and not rivets. Um, so I taped them off. I said to mark them. I figure that tape is going to scream at my uh, scream for attention far more than. Uh, than, uh, than any kind of marker would. I also did the same thing on the back portion uh, where it's not gonna have any kind of countersunk um, just because I know that if I get happy and I have music jamming in my ears, I may end up doing all the holes on accident. So yeah, let's get back to it. All right, so we're up to step number eight, which is machine countersinking the holes um, pretty much everywhere from that bottom, that very bottom DS1004, all the way up to the top of these, uh, these support pieces here. Uh, so machine countersinking, basically what that is, is it allows these dimples, just kind of like a, a little, little tester that I made, but the dimples that we made on the skin, uh, it's the same size dimple there. So what it allows, um, what machine countersinking allows us to do is it allows the part to uh, sit flush inside of there. Um, so if it wasn't machine countersunk, you'll see like this portion here, um, it would have nowhere to grab, it would just kind of be running around and it would not be a tight fit. Um, so it allows that to kind of sit right in that notch, right there, and uh, sit flush inside. So we'll get to it. Um, we'll do this side here all the way up to the top portion of that support piece, and then we'll flip it around and do the other side. Uh, so yeah, let's get to it. But yeah, looks like the next steps here is going to be deburring and moving on to finally riveting things. Um, so we'll end this video here. Uh, it's probably way too long, uh, but at least the next video here will actually be putting some pieces together. I'll also have to jump back in the um, in the steps a little bit to a portion where I was countersinking 
uh, the doubler on the other uh, vertical support piece. Um, so we'll have to jump back a little bit there. There's a, uh, a part that Cleveland had to send out to me or a, a countersinking bit. I had one that was labeled wrong. Uh, so we'll jump back in the next video, finish up that piece, and then get to riveting everything together. Um, so if you're still watching this after this insanely long video here, appreciate you making it to the very end here. Uh, if you have any questions or any feedback, feel free to comment it down below. Um, but yeah, we'll get on to the next video and uh, get back to building.